It's been a long time Since y'all been waiting for something like this Peace and Shalom. I'd like to welcome you back to another Daily Devotional. My name is my brother E. Today's um, Daily Devotional was pressed hard on my heart. Um, was because of the shift and a lot of things going on in the world. And a lot of things that I see and hear that's going contrary to um, what God has planned for our lives personally, individually. Although this this world may seem a little bit upside down right now, and um, as I as I was um, out and about today and yesterday and for a couple of days now, I was starting to see um, and pick up a lot of um, worries and stress um, around the world. You know, more than more, more, more than usual. You know, and um, you know, I was trying to figure out, you know, um, especially you know, with traveling, wanted to make sure that uh, the places of travel are safe, and to make sure the areas are, are safe as well. So I always, you know, always um, pray when I travel, making sure that um, I'm well equipped and you know have what I need to have when um, Traveling to be, be protected from the craziness that's going on in the world. But um, Jesus Yeshua has placed on my heart. Um, because there's a lot of people who just falling short of the belief and, and keeping the standard of faith. You know, um, it's weird, like, um, how, you know, the way God was showing me, you know, like, how when I was in the world, about the world, and doing things that's worldly, um, you know, I would go about it like a, like an animal, I guess, you know what I mean? With how we live our normal days, and it's just like when I was showing me how when I was young, when I liked it a girl, and the, the, the measures I took to pursue that, that girl, or a woman at the time, and all the hula hoop I ran through, all the things that I've done to prepare to to make sure I have that, even though I was sitting, had that one night stand with that girl, that woman. And, you know, this is growing up and stuff like that, you know, when I was younger. And all the preparing that I did, all the practicing all the, you know, you know, you know how us men, how we do, um, especially when you're young and you, you know, you start to smell yourself, feel yourself. And, um, you know, I, it seems like I, you know, put a lot of effort into being with, with women. Um, and it, it gave me um, one of my share, but a lot of troubles and headaches along the way. But the father was showing me also, as we were doing, as what we were doing in the world, which was sinning and living a life that's contrary to the word, doesn't mean that we can't do the same thing living for God now in the most high. Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and that doesn't mean that we cannot live just like that same tactic, the same energy, the same um, determination that we did, what we was doing in the world. We must take that and transfer that over to giving that to God and doing what He wants us to do in His world that He has created. His world, living His world. So I read you um, John um, 14. Verse 10, believest thou not that I am in the Father, and that the Father is in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He does the work. Okay, so, believest thou not that I am in the Father? That means he was talking to his disciples like, you know, you don't, you know, believe, you better believe it. Uh, you're not doubting. <laughs> don't be doubting this. And, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me. He does the work. So, the relationship of having a spark of life, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, the breath of life, which is that connection to the Father, I'm speaking from that standpoint. 
Um, going into more, a little bit depth, it goes to verse 11. Um, John 14, verse 11. Believe me that I am in the Father, and that the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Meaning that the works that he did, the miracles, all the things that at that time, but just a little bit, you know, just like if you have somebody doing miracles now, and you'd be like, oh, what's, you know what I mean? Um, at that time, it was sort of like that, too. They heard of miracles, but not they wasn't seeing much, you know, because of, you know, uh, the type of um, Rome setting that was uh, uh, upon the earth at that time. Because Rome actually ruled, you know, um, most part of the, uh, of the earth. And they had their own beliefs and their own gods and internet. So nobody's really, really seen miracles like that. So when Yeshua, um, Jesus Christ came along, when he started doing these works, it was, he wasn't glorifying himself. He was glorifying the Father who gave him the power and authority to do these miracles. I mean, he was casting out demons out of people. He was um, commanding the air, the wind, the sea to calm down. He, he, he was just, he was causing people who were blind to see. He was just, Created miracles after miracles, so um, the Father wanted me to express that because there's a lot of people who just are, are, are feeling lost. You know, again, it's like a, a, a kind of lost again. I'm going to um, verse 12, John 14, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also the great, the greater works. And these shall he do because I go unto my father. So Yeshua was saying, Jesus Christ and Nazareth was saying, You hear about all these works and the stories that you heard? You're gonna be doing greater works than me. He wasn't um um being selfish and saying, you know, trying to put himself before everyone and say, That's it, um, you know, he just said I'm the truth in the way, and that is the truth. But other than that, he also gave us hope and a, a, and something to look for, which is what he spoke. He says, you're going to be doing greater works than me. Okay? So, he also said in verse um, 13, and whosoever shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So, just the same way he came into the earth, he walked the earth, he glorified the Father through the miracles he was doing because he did the will of the Father. So he was glorifying Yah, the Heavenly Father. He was glorifying Him. So it was bringing attention, not to Yeshua, Jesus Christ, but to the Father. Because he was glorifying the Father through His acts by healing people. Like, if you see somebody here, like, who can do this? Well, who, who's making you do this? Who's giving you the power to already do that? The Heavenly Father. The Heavenly Father, the creator of the universe, has given me the power and authority to do these things which you have not seen before. Okay, so um, um, there's a lot of people um, who are a little bit, um, just a little bit off when it comes to um, understanding the relationship with Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and Nazareth, and the Heavenly Father. Um, and I go and I skip to verse 20, and John 14, verse 20. And that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. So if you accept that Jesus Christ and Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, as your Lord and Savior, so have you accepted the miracles that He's able to perform? And it shall act in His name and shall be given to you so the Father in heaven can be glorified. This is not about asking um, the Most High for a million dollars and stuff like that. So be, you know, unless you're destined and that's the will of the Father that that money is going to be helping out um, people from... Um, you know, large amounts of people or bringing work to the kingdom here on earth, then, you know, that's the, the Father's will. But, you know, most people um, um, are falling short because they don't understand why uh, their prayers are not being answered. And they feel like they, there's, you know, they're cut off or God doesn't want them anymore. God doesn't want to um, answer their prayers and stuff like that, well, which is the opposite of that. So, um, um, the shoe is in you. Um, there was a spiritual transformation that took a part when he died on that cross. When he, um, when he died on that cross, he went to the underworld. 
in the spiritual world. And he defeated Satan. He defeated the evil one that's in this world. Um, he defeated him and all his angels. And, and he rose. He, he rose from the grave the third day. So um, that kind of power and authority um, caused him to see him in the physical after the third day, rising from the dead. And people started to see him like they couldn't believe it. It was like, if you've seen somebody, if you know somebody that was dead, and you know they killed him because you've seen them kill him or, or her or whatever, then all of a sudden you see them walking around, what would you say? What would you do? There were people in that same day, they couldn't believe it. It was like, even the people he was teaching, some of them didn't, didn't even believe it. It was like, nah. Uh, it's Thomas, uh, one of the disciples, he couldn't believe that um, Jesus Yeshua HaMashiach rose from the grave. He didn't believe it. He said, man, you're bugging, you're crazy. And he said, I, will, I, I wouldn't believe it until I see it, in other words, you know? So what happened? Jesus Christ Yeshua HaMashiach appeared to him. And he couldn't believe it. He said, hey, Thomas, he said, look, touch my hand. You know, the part where they stuck those long nails in my hands, touch it, touch, touch my thigh, touch my feet, and Thomas was like, took it aback, he was like, I can't believe it, like, but, um, Yeshua Jesus said, um, blessed is those who've never seen me, but believe in me, so, those who've never seen him, I mean, we wasn't there at the time where Yeshua was born, or Jesus walked the earth, and did all those things, but blessed is those who Believe in him, but never seen them. And, and many treasures are going to be rewarded to those um, who believe in him. So, um, so this kind of um, this kind of shutdown that people are going to, um, even though there's things going on in the world, the Most High, the Heavenly Father, will not allow certain things to go on through His will. Everything is still in His will. Um, even though it may look crazy and evil. The Most High didn't create this world to be evil. The prince of this world did it. It's an illusion. Illusion around people's eyes in the world about a lot of things that are covering people, blinding people. So, people actually are living in a, in a lie until it's discovered, until they realize the illusion. And I used to be a part of that illusion. There's millions of people who used to be part of that illusion. But when you're sure how much sure, when you give your life over to them, that illusion is removed. And you get to see the real world. You get to see the real things, real people, what life is really about. You get to see God, the Most High, the Heavenly Father, as He's supposed to be. You start to see things you've never seen before. That's why when you see people, when they're born again, when they receive Jesus as Yeshua, they're out there preaching, you know, out there, they all lit on fire because that that um, blindness is removed from them. They're on fire now. They're like, whoa, I've been living a lie. I wasted my time. I wasted my life. I've been taught the wrong things. And their spirit comes alive. And they want to do the right thing. They want to start waking up other people and teaching them the truth and showing, showing them about Yeshua, what he did, that he's real. Like, this is not a game. So a lot of people may see those people who've been on the streets. There's some who've been preaching, oh, he's coming, he's coming, and he never came, right? I know there's, there's people who say, well, you know, I know this person used to preach and used to say all this and that, Jesus is coming, and um, he, he never seen them. But the whole thing of the fact that he is coming and that we can see all around the world what's going on, things and events that um, has never taken place like this around the world. Um, I mean, there are certain things that happen but we're at a time um, which is mentioned in the Bible uh, and history is logged, documented, and it shows a play for play plan in the model of everything that's going to happen, that's going to come, and what's going now. Now, um, I always tell people just like, you know, um, I know people have their feelings about Trump and stuff like that. When he first got elected, uh, I said, I told people, and I knew, I knew something about Trump was beyond just the normal, you know, just a, another um, 
kind of president that was just a monarch type of place to hold. You know, there was something else that God was putting in my heart versus what other people were saying that everybody was just following. But, you know, like, God made me, the most I made me see something. Why is it a man, businessman, he's a businessman, president at this time, in this world of history, what's going on? Why is he quoting the Bible? Why is he so much um, attuned and adapt to the Bible, things of the Bible? I mean, it could have been anyone. It could have been a Muslim um, president. It could have been any president that's from another type of religion or why is he adamant to talk about the Bible? And why does he have people around him praying for him? Um, what's going on? What's going What's What's really going on? And, you know, this is for a few people that they need to open their eyes because um, the most I've been showing me, um, you know, and like I said, I don't speak a lot because people kind of been um, uh, coerced into having feelings and thoughts of perception of certain things. Um, they do have that technology to do that. And it's been used on all different websites and to um, co coerce people, um, um, kind of like brainwash people into a certain belief or feeling. I mean, this, this technology is real. I mean, it, it exists. <laughs> it's been here for a long time. And now they 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 um actually um, bringing um a lot of uh, results that they like at the place. So it's going to be you know, they're trying to open it up a little bit more and see how they can expand its use around the world, you know. But um the technology that a lot of people don't understand this technology that's out there now ain't no game. I mean they got some stuff, man. Uh, I don't want to go off the topic because I could talk about time machine and then people will be like, well, okay, what's this got to do with Jesus or Yeshua? Well, we got to talk about other people from other planets. And I'm like, hold on, what's this, this, this thing got nothing to do with the Bible? It's, believe me, I could go on and on and on. And it's based on the Bible. It's based on Yeshua and Jesus Christ and Yeshua. It's based on what we see, what we hear about your souls and other people on um, time, um, um, portal holes and different dimensions where this stuff is actually um, being seen now by people. And I'm not talking about the imagery graphics that they use on YouTube to um, fake a video and stuff like that. I'm talking about some real stuff. And, you know, and you wonder why the world is the way it is right now. But um, somebody's messing with the timeline, period. That's what the, Spirit, the Holy Spirit was like. Somebody messing with the timeline, period. Um, I was trying to get around to saying it in a way it won't make me look crazy to the people who don't understand this stuff and believe. And I mean, most I said, hey, if they don't believe now, the stuff that's going on in the world, they're lost and they're going to be lost. Um, and not in a funny way, but, you know, um, I mean, you can't, you can't think um, and fall off when you start to think that, just look around the world. That'll keep you grounded, okay? So if you think that what I'm saying is a little bit off, a little bit crazy, because you haven't experienced it or seen it or know that it actually exists, just look around what's going on in the world right now with this virus, this other um, um, uh, other viruses that they're coming out with that I predicted. There's a lot of things that I've predicted, um, and I'm not tooting my own horn, but the most High has revealed to me. Um, even in my darkest hour, which... We all may think it's a darkest hour, but it's for our greatest good. But there was some um, things before this pandemic happened. Uh, I was going through some things personally. Um, been going through it for a couple of years here and there. The Motai said, stop everything, hold on. He says, drop everything. Your life is about to change. Um, and it's going to change around the world. And, um, you know, he was kind of preparing me. I had the um, self-purification, um, a lot of repentance, get rid of stuff. Um, you know, Yeshua stepped to me on 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 um, on a different level, and He showed me what I needed to do and the things about to come on the world. And as we know, you know, there are people who dwell into the dark arts and certain things. And um, the Most I said, don't even worry about them no more. Um, they're <laughs> the stuff that's coming in the world. Um, 
Yeah, they're gonna have their hands full with the evil. That's uh, if they. In other words, he was telling me if my enemies uh, think they're evil, wait till the stuff that's coming in the world, and and that's the spirit of the Antichrist and the true spirit of the Antichrist. I'm not talking about just talk. And this is a, a, a energy that you could feel. I spoke about this in my other, um, you know, kind of sermons that I used to do. But um, again, I don't want to bore you to go off topic. I just wanted to give. To you, this daily devotion that was placed in my heart by the Father, sort of turned into a little sermon, but the Father also placed that in my heart to speak, so I'm being obedient of speaking what the Father wants me to speak. So, because of the different scriptures that was left, and especially in John 14 and um, verse 10, when Yeshua was speaking, Jesus Christ and Nazareth was speaking about the Father's in me, the Father's in you too. Um, Yeshua HaMashiach, when he died on that cross, he went to the underworld and rose the third day, you know, and defeated Satan. That same power and authority, that transformation, that's in you too. That's the power and authority is in you too. You know, he did that. When he did that, it was like a, a kind of transformation and shift throughout the universe because of so much wickedness and evil that's around, that was in the world and around certain parts of the universe. That he was able to um, um, kind of like his light um, um, divide himself and to give us a new um, a new day to walk in, so to say. So that's why so many people, when they feel Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, and that, when they really feel him, they, it's like they're on another level. They're like, what's wrong? They're talking about Jesus baby all day, <laughs> Yeshua HaMashiach all day. They've been talking about God all day. And they do everything of God. and um, they live a righteous life and they do accordingly to the world of the Father. So I just wanted to press that on you uh, so you can never uh, feel um, battered or beat down, run down because of the craziness that's going on in the world. The Father has placed in you our own authority to Yeshua I'm sure to, um, to have, like he said, you do greater work than I do. So for the kingdom, kingdom business. In the will of the Father. So Yeshua came to this world to do kingdom business. That's through the will of the Father. So so would you do also if you accept Yeshua Hamashet, Jesus Christ and Nazareth, you'll be doing kingdom business. And um um the kind of power and authority is not for anything else but kingdom business. Okay, so I hope that this sermon has helped you or this um daily devotion has helped you. I pray that um you receive the word that you, that you needed to receive that I bless you and strengthen you. I'd like to thank you for coming. My name is Brother E. Peace and shalom.